Today I'm going to share how to make bags like this out of flexible food packaging. And you can see this particular bag, it was made out of packages like this, these uh, that you get your frozen strawberries in. And then I have other examples like this one. Uh, I like the design on this one, it's kind of fun. And this is made from little lemonade uh, packets like this. I originally got the idea for making these flexible food packaging bags because this was like 20 years ago. I was in a store in Washington, DC, and I saw this bag and it was made out of juice pouches uh, from the Philippines. And I thought it was so cool. Initially, I started um, making kind of like boxes like this that you could put, um, organize your stuff. This is holding some t-shirts in it to hold it up like this. And as you can see, I just sewed uh, the packages together, um, just straight up. But there was some challenges with this particular type of design. Um, first of all, the edges, these edges right here are not that uh, smooth. I mean, they are, they are smooth, but they are a little bit sharp. And so sometimes um, people touch them and they think, ooh, what's, what's going on there? That makes them nervous. And then the other challenge with this type of design is that um, when it doesn't have anything in it, it tends to just collapse in on itself and look like a crinkly mess. This was like Kit Kats, oh, animal crackers. I'm just showing you so you can see the types of packaging, the types of uh, products that you could maybe collect. This one's prunes, pretzels. So if you are out and you're trying to decide what kind of packaging could I collect to make my bags? I mean, I think if you hold it, you're going to feel that um, different kinds are thicker than others. So for example, this kind, this pretzel bag or the almond bag, dried fruit, snacks, they tend to be the right kind of packaging. Whereas if you get like frozen food, like frozen rice or frozen vegetables, that tends to be too thin. It rips more easily. It's not as thick for whatever reason. So once you've saved up enough packaging to make a bag, the next step is to trim it up so that they're all exactly the same size. And with these strawberry bags, one of the things that's nice is I actually just cut along the line. There's kind of like a thing you press to, to close it. And I just cut that off. You could keep that in the bag if you wanted to. I like it because it allows me to quickly trim them off. And also I think it's a little bit hard on my sewing machine to sew over that. So I like to just cut that off. But also it's like a built-in line. So then what I do is I, I wanna sew them together into the panel that's gonna make the bag. And you can't really pin through them because they'll rip. So what I do is I use washi tape and I tape them down in position before I sew them with my sewing machine. And I like to overlap them about three quarters of an inch and I, you know, this edge is a little rougher than the bottom of the bag. So I'm going to put cover up the rougher edge um, like that. And then I'm just going to get my washi tape. I choose washi tape over like scotch tape or masking tape just because I can reuse it a whole bunch of times. So once I have um, four panels of this size sewn, I lay them on top of each other and I line them all up and make sure that they are all the exact same size. And then the last thing I need to make my bag, I've got the four sides of the bag, but I need a bottom of the bag. And so I'm going to grab another, another one and I'm just going to measure it and make sure, yep, it is going to work because I need it to um, be the same width as the bottom all four. So there's my the bottom of my bag. So you'll remember on these cubes that I just sewed them zoop, like that um, at this point. And you can do that, but I, I explained that some of the challenges with that is it's a little bit sharp. And also that when they're, the cubes are empty, they tend to collapse. Um, whereas I found when I started putting fabric around the edges, like I did with this bag, that first of all, the bag lasted longer. It's nice and soft and the bag holds up really well. 
um, even when it's empty, it keeps its shape. And so I started changing my technique, which was to put the, this kind of trim along the edge before I construct the bag. And this is different than that original bag that I bought 20 years ago. That was just sewing the juice pouches together without any trim. So this is like something I've learned through time to improve upon this idea. So in terms of uh, what, what, what do you put along the edge? Well, you know, we don't want to put super fancy fabric along the edge here. Our goal of this project is to reduce waste uh, and to reuse things that are not getting used currently. So when I'm choosing fabric to put on the edge, I'm going to look in my fabric for fabric that I've been given um, that I don't really think I will probably use for another purpose but it's cute enough. I looked in my fabric and this type of fabric, which is, you know, this was from like the seventies and uh, it, it's, a, it's a very nice, soft fabric, very pretty, but it is not something I'm probably gonna use in one of my current designs of quilts. Uh, so now you can see I made a bunch of binding and this is all uh, one and three quarter inches wide and this is uh, my preferred with the binding but you use whatever you like and if you're a quilter and you've uh, done binding on a quilt before then you're very familiar with what i'm about to do so to put the binding or the trim on the panels for the bag i lay it um, nice side down and i take one of these clips this is like a hair barrette clip or you can also buy like little um they're, they're almost like clothes pins but very tiny and I just uh, start laying it around the edge like this So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew until I'm about a half an inch from the edge of the plastic bag and stop and like take the bag out. So here we go. And then I'm going to back stitch and then actually remove it like this. Boop. And then I'm going to turn the bag. So I'm going to start going down the side. So what I do is I flip the binding up like that so it's like at a 90 degree angle and it makes kind of like a triangle shape and then I fold it Oop, there goes my light <laughs> I fold it so it's laying aligned with the bag and I take my clips and I just clip it there just to hold it And when I start sewing, I'm not going to start right at the very edge. I'm going to start about a half inch away. So I'm going to keep doing that until I go around all the four corners and then I'll meet you at the end. So I'm just going to show you what to do when you're getting towards the end of that uh, last bit. Do that last corner the same way I have been doing corners. Fold it up, get that triangle shape. Pull it down. Now, this is where I had started, and I don't start right at the very edge. I, I because I want to do is fold it over and leave a little, um, so it's a finished edge there. And I'm going to just come and sew over top of that. Now I have a little bit of binding left here. So I'm actually just going to trim that off.
and now it's ready for the next phase. At this point, you'll have uh, a panel with the binding laying on it like this. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it inside out like this. And bring the fabric around. Okay. And then I come back to the, this was like the beginning part. And I'm just going to pull it as tight as I can. And then I'm going to fold it and fold it again. And I'm going to use my clips to hold it. So fold it and fold it again. Clip to hold it, fold it and fold it again. And if you're into metric, it's a, the binding is about a centimeter wide, um, maybe half inch. <laughs> So the corner, the way I do it is first I pull it as tight as I can with my finger like that. And it's going to make sort of like a triangle here. And then I do the fold it and fold it again on the side. And it'll make sort of like a picture frame. But what I find is I have to sort of pull it tight. And then I'll put a clip on this side just to keep it. And I'm going to keep pulling this tight while I sew. So now I've actually kind of captured the corner <laughs> and I can turn and come back a little bit out to more of the edge. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip the, the sides, that fold and fold thing again. And I'm going to do that blah, blah, and then I'm going to sew and I'm going to do each corner the same way. So now I have a panel with uh, binding all the way around the edges and I have to do this four more times for the three sides and then the bottom and then I can construct the bag together. One thing I want to point out is how I pull a little bit on the sewing as it goes through the sewing machine with my right hand. And that's because the little feeder feet underneath, they can't grip onto the plastic the way they can grip onto fabric. And so I will gently pull at the same speed that I know it should go. And that's experience of using my sewing machine, kind of how fast I know it should go. You can see this right hand is actively doing something in the back, whereas normally I might just be feeding it through. So I have finished sewing the fabric trim on the various panels of my bag. You can see it there. I like to have uh, handles on my bag that make it easier to, to carry, obviously. Now this particular bag, I made the handle from a recycled Taekwondo belt. I have a friend who gave me all her children's old belts and I've been slowly using them up. Um, and that, that's great for a humongous bag like this, but it would be too heavy for this bag, which is going to be a little bit smaller. Um, so the other thing I do is when I deconstruct things that I'm going to throw away because they're no longer functional, I will remove all the straps or clasps or other things that are part of that bag or suitcase. And in this case, I've got a couple of, um, straps that I salvaged from an old backpack. So I'm going to use those as the handles for this bag. And um, it's important to sew the handles onto the panels before you construct the bag because otherwise you're wrestling the whole bag in your sewing machine and it's pretty tedious. Um, now something, sewing these onto uh, the bag, um, I'm basically going to make a, an upside down letter U by sewing them on kind of like that with the handle sticking up um, and and I could just sew directly onto the bag like that but I do worry a little bit of that over time it would rip the plastic so what I do to make the handle last longer is I take some upholstery sample fabric which is a little bit thicker fabric I mean you could use any fabric and I will make like a little pocket on the back okay so this is how I did the pocket first I ironed down all the four sides and then I just sewed across the top so that that would be a finished top. And then I just sewed it down on three sides inside the 
This is the front of the bag and this is the inside of the bag. Uh, so now you can see the handle is on the panel and it did sew through the pocket a little bit, but that's okay. The pocket is still there. You still have a small pocket that you could put stuff in. But most importantly, it helps reinforce uh, those handles so they have more to grip onto than just the plastic. So there's the second handle and I just want to show that I went back and forth extra on the tops and bottoms of where I'm attaching the handles because those are the likely failure points um, where the handle might would get ripped off. Okay, so I'm at the point now where I'm going to start constructing the bag into a bag. I've got four panels, two with the handles and pockets on it and two without and then a bottom panel as well. Um, so typically the way I construct these bags is I will alternate, right? And I'll just sew, 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 and then do the bottom last. The bottom is, is the most challenging and I'm going to make a little video to show you some of the tricks, but you're really wrestling with the bag at that point because it's in a three-dimensional shape. I'm just going to take two panels, put them side by side like this in the sewing machine and just go and it is a little bit thicker because you're going through four layers of um, fabric plus a little bit of plastic. So it's, you know, if you want to use a denim needle, you could. I just use my normal sharp new needle and that works great. And I just want to note, if you get to the bottom and it's not like perfectly perfectly lined up like this it's okay this is going to be a pretty forgiving process so you can see i've got the four panels that make up the sides of the bag in a tube like this or a box and now it's time to put the bottom on and so the way i'm going to put the bottom is i'm going to take the two pieces of fabric that are the trim i'm just going to line them up as best i can and i'm just going to sew along there and i'm going to do that four times and the bottom will be attached so putting the bottom on this bag is the most challenging part. And um, at this point, what I tend to do is I turn my sewing machine sideways like this so it's sticking off the end of my sewing table. And then I also remove this part. And the reason I'm doing this is I want as little stuff around here as possible because I'm wrestling with the entire bulk that is this bag. And so I want to um, just minimize that. Um, so what I do now is I just sort of feed it in here and you can see the bulk of the bag can just hang off the side and hopefully not be too much in the way. And that corner there where all the, there's actually like so many pieces coming together. I just skip over that and come over a little bit because the sewing machine cannot deal with so many layers of fabric and plastic together. So I'm just gonna do my best to get as close to the corner as possible and then forward a little bit backwards I'm not that close to the corner this, this is my third side this is not elegant it's not easy so if if you find this part hard that's okay that's normal and sorry my hand is blocking but it's so it's doing that thing where it's pulling it very gently through and I'm almost at the corner. Good. I'm back up. Okay, that side went pretty well actually. So uh, I'm going to take it off. There's only one side left to the bottom. Whew. Ah. <laughs> so, one other tip when you're getting this. Um, putting the bottom on. I've only got one side left to sew. I'm just going to try to make this kind of like flat by putting the two sides together that need to sew, be sewn together and then that makes it easier and it's not like a big three-dimensional object that I'm trying to shove through this thing again. Okay well I have my finished bag here. Uh, this one is a, I haven't really made one this shape before. I think this would be great for putting like bags of chips or other things that are kind of fluffy and bulky at the grocery store. And uh, you can see inside there, it's got some pockets. 
And, and actually this uh, fabric that I used for the trim, it's kind of growing on me because it kind of looks like um, strawberry flowers, I think a little bit. So maybe that was subconsciously why I chose it. Anyway, I hope that you are inspired to make a bag from flexible food packaging. And you might think, well, why, why bother? Why not just use fabric? <laughs> well, I think it's great to reuse things that are normally going to get thrown away. And also it's fun to make things that are unexpected and people are uh, want to know the story behind them. So I hope you're inspired and have a great day.